reaction of that. So things might be a little bit different today. Today for episode two, I was gonna be covering the software aspect of the Nintendo Switch. I could easily have done that from the house using the Elgato to capture the, the screen, the source, the format, and uh, cover it that way. But today I actually had to go to a art museum with a friend and I said yes to that. So I felt like this is a little bit different. I also get to bring you with me and still give my take my review on the operating system and software. So last week I was able to give you my first impressions on the Nintendo Switch hardware. This episode we're moving on to the software, starting with the operating system. It is bare bones. The operating system is a custom designed one to run on this particular architecture with the sole purpose of squeezing out every bit of resource it has. The mobile custom Tager X architecture would not have been as powerful had it been running Android which is power hungry and labor intensive. Nintendo decided to make a games console and this is the first time since the GameCube that we've seen a console solely dedicated to gaming. Yes, this means Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime and so forth will be missing. You can read it and weep or you can rejoice in that it is a gaming first console. The operating system is simple, clean and modern. The UI, the home screen, you see a top row dedicated to displaying your games, in this case just Zelda. Below that you will see six icons. The first one, news. Here Nintendo displays all the news in relation to games and helpful bits teaching you how to use features on your Switch. I assume this will be more useful in the future. Second up, the Nintendo eShop, where you can see recent releases showcasing your latest games like Zelda Breath of the Wild and the next game on my list, Fast RMX. The next tab over you'll see your coming soon titles. There are currently only three games listed, but there may as well be only one. And that's because I think anything releasing around Mario Kart 8 is non-existent. In the next tab over you can enter a code to redeem a game. Third is your album. The Nintendo Switch has a dedicated screenshot button and you save your photos here. From here you could share your images to your friends on Facebook or Twitter. I like it and a lot of people have been enjoying my updates from Twitter. Fourth over is the Joy-Con icon. Here you can mess with your settings for your controllers and choose how you want to play. Fifth icon is the settings. Here you have airplane mode, screen brightness, screen lock, parental controls, and a side note there's a fun video in the news section about parental controls. I recommend it if you're a parent, it's informative and delightful. There are internet settings for a wired and wireless, users for user accounts, Mii's to manage your Mii's, Amiibos to manage them, themes light or dark, I prefer light, notifications like for your news or your friend requests, sleep mode, controllers, TV settings for 480p, 720p, 1080p, RGB range adjustment of screen, screen burn-in reduction, and please use this, match TV power state, and a system for your updates and other generic settings. At the top of the display, you have time, a Wi-Fi icon, and battery life. I do want to say, while we're on topic, that something seems to be wrong with the Wi-Fi. Be it 2 feet or 20 feet away from my router, the wireless flickers between strength. That covers the OS, but now the games. I have only one game, Zelda Breath of the Wild, but it does represent the rest of the catalog in terms of format. It is on a cartridge, and it runs well. You insert it into the Nintendo Switch, and because it's a cart, the software boots up quickly. I hit the home button, the game suspends quickly. I can use any other app just as fast. The software runs well and is completely compatible with the operating system. Before I wrap things up, I did want to say that the update that the Nintendo Switch needed was amazing. It took about 20 seconds for me to download and install, far shorter than that of the three and a half hours I had to wait for the Wii U. We can thank Nintendo for learning that we want to play a game right away and not install social features and video apps. I love them, but not if they're going to slow my experience at launch. Everything else plays Netflix or Hulu, so I'll worry about that in the future. Also, since this ends my software review, and since I have my hardware review up, I have a question to answer. Some of you tweeted me asking if you should get the Nintendo Switch. I say yes, but not now. The Switch is missing a lot, and chances are one of those things that are missing is something that you care about. Mine is the tracking of achievements and Miiverse. I wouldn't gripe over Miiverse if I knew it was coming down the road, but it seems like it won't. Also, the game's catalog is a little dry, but that will be quickly fixed with a dose of games releasing here shortly. So the answer in short, yes. Wait two to three months. Anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by for this episode. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'll see you next time.